Well, here we are at the Atlanta Film Festival. I'm welcoming, welcoming all my fellow movie geeks uh, here to speak. I'm speaking right now with the director, and are you the producer? Is I guess you're the uh, director and producer, right? Yeah, and yeah, just and, jack of all and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is the expression? Uh, Chief cook and bottle washer. It, and, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, his name is Matt Reynolds, and he's with uh, he's with he's bringing a, his first film to the Atlanta Film Festival, and it's called The Great Chicken Wing Hunt. And I think the title is pretty self-explanatory. I have to I have to tell you, I haven't seen the movie yet, so. Uh, but I hear it's a real crowd pleaser, and who doesn't look like chicken wings? I mean, mm. uh, let me <laughs> right. I mean, who? who yeah, I mean, like I say, I say, Jesus, I say in the movie. I can't believe I'm quoting myself, but like, it's true. Wings somehow generate a certain like enthusiasm among people who eat them. Like, and you don't huh. get that kind of enthusiasm, I think, with every food out there. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's some people who get into hamburgers and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, there that's, are that's, for that's, sure. That's, that's yeah. something. But there's not but, hamburger night at the bar. No, ten cent. You know, one dollar. You know, maybe there is somewhere, but absolutely you know. not. And there's not a run on hamburgers when uh, a when, Super Bowl. When the Super Bowl hits. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is. You're wise to pick the chicken wing as a, <laughs> as a as a focus for your documentary. But let me ask you about your background first. Uh, uh, this is your first film. So, what were right. you what were you doing before you picked up the camera? I was. This is also part of the story of the movie. I was a journalist uh -huh. uh, in Eastern. Central Eastern Europe and uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, uh -huh. and the movie came about, uh, and my change of careers came about because I was throwing uh, parties where I would introduce my new Slavic friends to chicken wings. I never had chicken wings before, and these and parties that's not something that, that has translated over. Well, to, it has okay. just gotten there. Okay, um, you might like if you went to Prague, you could probably find chicken wings in ten restaurants. And maybe they'd be pretty good in a couple places. Uh -huh. um, and you, you'd find plenty of people that would not even know what they were. Right. I mean, they would know what a chicken wing was. You know, but but, but a hot buffalo wing. Right. They're not familiar with the, the combination of sauce, uh -huh. and hot sauce, and blue cheese, and uh -huh. celery, and the whole package. So I was introducing wings, and these parties became these huge kind of Dionysian feasts <laughs> where people would, you know, drink and eat wings and they're crazy. Some kind of <laughs> chicken wing bacchanalia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, uh, and at one of these parties, we got this idea in our heads that, and it was just like this drunken idea that, you know, we never thought would have come to fruition, but it was that I would take a bunch of them back to the U.S. on a tour of the best wing places in the Northeast United States, mm -hmm. wings being invented in Buffalo, so the idea being that that was the region that mm -hmm. had the best wing places. And, and um, you know, the irony of not a wine tour, but a wing tour, you know, <laughs> and then that just kind of slowly picked up steam and grew into this quest that during that trip it would be a quest to find the world's best wing. So there would be a voting party, there would be... A yeah, there would be judges, judges and, and, yeah. and then um, people started coming out of the woodwork asking to join, uh -huh. like from all over the world. Right. And uh, then I just thought, you know, I, I've got something really interesting happening here um. and no one has told the story of this food, which some people think is the first purely American food to conquer, to travel all over the world. Uh -huh. Because hamburgers go back to Germany and of pizza course. goes back to Italy and a lot of foods that we think of as quintessentially <coughs> American have some kind of roots elsewhere. Uh -huh. um, I mean even French fries. Even French fries. Yeah. 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 Well, the word French is in French fries, right? I mean, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you mean freedom fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'm glad that's how it went. So, uh, so so anyway, so it just it, it it gained some kind of traction, and um, we people started coming out of the woodwork to join us. And I decided that not only would I organize this trip, but that I would make a movie about it. And then uh, this isn't really part of the movie, but just for me personally, making this movie became a way to transition out of journalism text journalism, into writing stories, else. into visual storytelling and film, uh -huh. you know, a slightly uh -huh. different career path. So you were really so. just sort of dipping your toe in and, and but uh, in, into the into the visual medium and, uh, and, yeah. and you found yourself with something that was just obviously a story that needed to be told. Yeah, and a story so. that I felt like I was really excited to tell. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I mean, I, I didn't... 
I had wanted to make movies or work on movies in some capacity, but I don't think, in general, uh, I'm the kind of person that like needs to make a movie. Like I, I, I want to find a project that I think needs to some needs story to needs to be, be told. told. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a cliche, but like mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I'd rather like now I've become an editor, mm -hmm. and I, I would rather just keep editing other people's work until I find something mm -hmm. than make a movie direct a movie that I'm not my heart's not in just for the sake of having to direct another movie mm -hmm. yeah, so. anyway that's a what, different conversation but. What's, what's interesting about hearing you talk about this is my theory about documentaries and, and even narrative films uh -huh. is that is that there needs to be some sort of sense of discovery in the movie mm -hmm. for the filmmaker. The filmmaker can't exactly know how the movie is going to turn uh -huh. out, uh, or else it becomes by road. It becomes sort of like a history lesson. Or right. Something. It gets a little boring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But but there is a certain sense of of discovery yeah. in this movie too. But yeah. it's not just about the wings. It's also about the people that yeah. that you have gathered together in this bus. Yeah. And I think that's one of the fascinating aspects yeah. of this movie because you get to see a group of people who are incredibly vociferous and, and <laughs> very and very dedicated yeah. to uh, discussing yeah. one of their favorite subjects. Right. Um, can you talk about some of the characters that you got sure, together in sure. this? Sure, sure. It's interesting what you're saying, if I could just make a comment. Um, it's, uh, I agree with you about the process of discovery in film, and I, I think it's... Uh, I think part of the reason for that is that the world is such an inter infinitely interesting and random and complex place that like <coughs> what the world gives you, mm -hmm. you can find something more interesting in that than you could structure and think of, you know, yeah. initially. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, you know, it's exactly. what, if you're open to the different possibilities, uh -huh. something will just happen that will lead you to something else, right. especially in documentaries, that will t end up being your story. Uh -huh. And that inevitably, I think, is going to be more interesting than imposing some kind of idea initially and trying to script it. Uh -huh. and, you know. That's the difference well, between a good documentary and reality TV. Well, I mean, you, know? you can feel the, you can feel in any kind of film that has a sense of that sense of discovery, you can feel the energy right. that's put into every aspect of the film, from the photography to primarily the editing on a documentary. Yeah. You can feel the energy that's felt by the filmmaker, mm -hmm. and it translates into the audience. Yeah. The audience is not just sitting there bored, but they're actually engaged yeah. because you're engaged. Right, See, right. if they're not engaged, they can kind of feel it. They can't put their finger They don't know it, why they're not engaged, yeah, but, but for sure. They, but they... There, there is a difference, yeah. you know. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but but yes, tell about me about some Sorry. of the characters. So um, one of we <coughs> we, <laughs> I, we have a great cast, and mm -hmm. I, I feel like I can say that without bragging because they just came out of the woodworks, uh -huh. and I just said it's a very Join us, diverse you know? group of people. But it, okay, so uh, <laughs> competitive eater uh -huh. named Ben Beavers. Uh -huh. He calls himself the Mighty Thor. Which sounds kind of silly, and it is silly, but he's... It's he's, funny. He's kind, of sensitive, he's kind of a gentle giant kind of figure. He's, he's kind of an outlandish competitive eater, but kind of a sweet, kind of sensitive person. He's, he's an interesting kind of two sides to him. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, a folk musician mm -hmm. named uh, Al Caster, who was also a wing buff, and whose knowledge about wings goes back to the 50s and 60s. Um, a Hawaiian chef. Mm -hmm. uh, me. Um... Uh, 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 a Kodak employee named Ron, who is an avid hunter and a little bit of a geek, and who grew up in the Niagara Falls area, uh -huh. uh, which is by Buffalo, so grew up during the wing boom in the 60s and 70s, and mm -hmm. he also is an amateur hot sauce maker. Uh -huh. um, and all of these guys had their different motivations and different, you know, added something to the group dynamics. Oh, one of the most important people is not on the journey, but he's uh, an important presence in the movie. We found uh, the last living witness to the night that chicken wings were invented. Mm. Dom Zangi, an old, wow. an old guy in Buffalo, wow. who tells a story about being there and, and how they came up with the recipe. And uh, wow, he that's is fascinating. quite a character. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very cool. Yeah, and just the way he—he's a very. I mean, the story is great, and the way he tells it is great, and mm. uh, he's very lovable, funny. So, how many cities did this tour take you to? Um. Well, it was a 16-day trip, and every day was a different place. But uh -huh. sometimes it was a small town, sometimes it was a series of small towns. Um, Did you start off in Buffalo? We started no, we started out in New York State, and um, 
we kind of, I don't know if you know the map of New York, but New York, New York, sorry, New York City is the, that's where we started. Yeah, down in the Southeast, the Buffalo's, yeah. the Northwest. Started in New York and we went into Vermont and Canada and kind of snaked our way west to Buffalo, dipping into Pennsylvania mm -hmm. along the way. Um, so it was 16 days and, uh, you know, five or six major cities, if you think of Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo, sure. major cities, Albany. And a lot of small towns and, and villages. Now I understand in the in the from the trailer, which again that's that's what I've seen so far. I'm very excited to see the movie. Um, uh, but uh, I understand from the trailer that uh, you you came into contact with some chefs that were uh, some chicken wing chefs that were just out of this world. Yeah, yeah. It was um, <clears throat> again we had amazing luck with the the, 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 the small group of chefs who end up being on the short list for, I mean, the movie, I think we said this, is a, was a quest to find the world's best wing. So mm -hmm. the, the small, we narrow it down to a group of, small group, and then there's a big debate, and um, I won't tell you what happens, but a, a two yeah. or three day argument that ensues about who's gonna win. I think that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we looked at both of the guys. There was a guy who, his sauce is very hot, and he gives you the full range of mild to hot to extreme so like the Scotch heat. bonnet kind of. Yeah, but but all based on fresh ingredients. Uh huh. And there was another guy who had a, a buffalo wing with a little bit of a twist, and there was some debate as to whether or not it was a buffalo wing or uh -huh. something new. Um, and but does this, they were does both this, like. Does this include you know anything like? A, did you just did you limit to just the buffalo type wing, or did it, was a there a question. lemon pepper? Or no, no we, we had we had a, the buffalo <laughs> wing was the main category, and then we had a side category uh, which we called novelty wing. Uh huh. And and then there was some debate as to whether one of the uh, contenders which was category it, where, which was it and where's uh, the line and uh huh. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's a, it's like, it's an academic movie about a, a, it's, yeah. a, it's in some ways it's like an academic yeah. foodie movie. You know, yeah. Right? One one of the things that um that I'm happy with the way the film turned out is when we started, I almost thought of it as a mockumentary uh -huh. that was real. Like it would have a sensibility of like Spinal Tap uh -huh. or, or the Christopher Guest films. Right. I'm not saying it's on that level, but that kind of um <clears throat> really silly and absurd in a way, but not going for the cheap, yeah. you know, jokes, um, but kind of more dry, subtle humor. Uh -huh. um, and I think we achieved that sensibility, but it, it was also ended up being a bit more substantial and heartfelt than I realized. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the film is about my uh, personal journey, mm -hmm. kind of returning home, having not lived there for a while, and thinking about why I left and what it is about wings mm -hmm. that I like so much. And, right. and the whole thing kind of walks that line between um, being silly, I, I like things that are like ridiculous, uh -huh. but also kind of true and kind of poignant. Yes. So it kind of tries to walk that line. I like that constantly. I, I like that um, too. But I don't think I answered your question. Like I got off. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, oh, being we a foodie movie. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think like the, the the movie, you will learn a lot about wings, uh -huh. but um, uh, it goes back and forth between taking that seriously, but also kind of. Uh, Appreciating the irony of the, the uh -huh. enterprise, you know, being something that we made up. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. You know. And just, and just the sort of, you know, when you see the title, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the mm -hmm. Great Chicken Wing Hunt, it's like, wow, it's a movie about chicken wings. Wow. <laughs> I, you know, I got to yeah. see this. I've, I, I have a hard time talking about it because um, I don't know. There's a lot of layers to. I guess everybody thinks that about the film, but there's a lot of layers to it. And I just think, God. You seem to like it from the title, but I just worry that some people might think, "Oh, it's it's it sounds stupid." You know, mm. it sounds like a really dumb film, and I hope I'd like to think that it's not a dumb film. That it, you know, that it has some. I think you know. I think it looks I think it looks <laughs> incredibly intelligent, yeah. and one of the things I like about I think I'm going to love about it is just the collection of diverse characters yeah. that are in here. So it's not just yeah. a movie about chicken yeah. wings; it's really about all of these people, yeah. including yourself and your girlfriends. And yeah, I was, I was just gonna, I was just going to mention that. Um, one of the other layers to the film, this is probably making the movie sound awful, it's one of the, it's, the film's about this, and it's about this, and it's about this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but no, no, I mean, you know. So, that can be good if it works, yeah. it, sometimes it can be a bad thing, but no, one of the layers is also that, um, in a sense, this was kind of like, my girl, I had a serious girlfriend, and it was an adventure I had to go out and do, and it mm -hmm. put a strain in our relationship, so that's a part of the movie, she, she what happens with us, mm -hmm. and, me in a sense maybe getting some kind of <coughs> adventure out of my system and what 
the implications were for our relationship. But then also her experiencing this strange trip and seeing where I'm from mm -hmm. and the viewer getting to see, she ends up kind of being the voice of reason, you yeah. know, seeing this through her eyes. And, you know, <laughs> being an outsider, know nothing about wings and being thrust into this and eating well, wings good. 10 puts, times a day. That puts, you know, it's just, it's just sort of like an audience advocate. Yeah, 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 in a way, yeah, yeah. So that's, exactly. that's good. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think yeah. that's a good, that's a good inclusion. You know? Yeah. Um, so, have you been totally bitten by the filmmaking bug? I've been so uh, consumed with making this, and it's a, been a passion project, so trying to f figure out, balance making this and then also making a living. I'm, I'm an editor, mm -hmm. TV and film editor, so uh, I don't have a specific project you know, coming up. Yeah, yeah. Really but, yeah. but you're keeping your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. I would like to, I think, I, I don't know if this will be it, but I think it would be very cool to make a mockumentary that really felt like a documentary. Mm -hmm. Like, I love the Christopher Guest mockumentary. I love, I love all the classic great mockumentaries, Spinal mm -hmm. Tap. Right. But Spinal Tap is you a great one. Yeah, you, you would, <coughs> most Tap people- Spinal probably the king of the yeah, mockumentary. Yeah, 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 But most people would not, occasionally you hear stories about someone not realizing it's a mockumentary. <laughs> but, yes. But you probably wouldn't fool most people. At some point you would realize, like, no, it, the drummer turning into a green, yeah, of course. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be cool to make a mockumentary where you really didn't know, unless you uh -huh. unless you told the audience that even the filming, you know, because even like even Spinal Tap, as great as it is, it doesn't really feel like a documentary because it occasionally it does, but not no, it, it does, it does, it not, does, but, not always. But um, back then too, they were shooting on sixteen millimeters, so it does kind of look it, and it has those kind of little rough edges, to yeah, it yeah, and yeah, stuff every once in a while. It does. But then sometimes you sometimes you see something in it that doesn't, yeah. Yeah. That feels like a set yeah. piece that's yeah. written. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, but, but that's not to take it away. Yeah, no, no, it's a brilliant film, movie. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favorite movies. Yeah. No, yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is to do something. I do understand. A little what bit you're more, saying. a little bit more ragged, a little, subtle, and a little bit a little more, more improvisational, subtle. so uh, that it really feels like the way documentaries are unexpected. You know? <laughs> I don't know how, how you do it, but I think it would be a cool cool thing to do. That would, that would be that would definitely be something yeah. great. Uh, you know who invented the mockumentary? Fellini, right? That's correct. But I've, I've never I've not seen <laughs> the whatever, clowns. I've not seen the clowns yet, uh -huh. so I, I don't know. Exactly. I don't hear much about it, so I wonder if it's is it is it I. It's 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 good, you yeah. know. I mean, I I find you know Fellini's fascination with clowns in the circus to be somewhat like, hmm, <laughs> I, but uh, I mean they're they're in all all of his movies, you know, yeah. really. But uh, it's good. It's, yeah. it's it's not my favorite, but you know, mm -hmm. it's not, obviously you know we owe him a debt of thanks. Yeah, for, you know, for, yeah. It's amazing to, to think of someone <clears throat> inventing a genre. Yeah, you know, especially and especially as late as you know, yeah. it's like sixty nine or something yeah. that that came out, or yeah. six, maybe sixty seven or something. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, that's that's. I think that's a great idea to do something that's so subtle that that you wouldn't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's going to be a difficult tightrope. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. It might. You might want to throw in another yeah. real documentary in before you try that out. So yeah. you can so you can get some kind of sense of. The rules that you need to break, break yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, um, it might you might need to work with amateurs, really. But then it would be like, now there's all kinds of questions, you know, how, yeah. how it would work. It, yeah. would, it would be, yeah, it's kind of like solving a math problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, you know, I don't. Um, I would want it to work as a film. Like I don't, I, I'm not really that into like things that are just purely experiments, you know, just for the sake of Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. make something. I want to make something that has, you know, has some kind has of arc. And, 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 yeah. a, and a real life behind it yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And now, what are the, I mean, I know that, as you said, mm -hmm. you, you just premiered here. But, yeah. and first of all, how did you like the audience reaction? Was it a thrill for you to see it in front of an audience? Yeah, the real, your cameraman is giving, giving the thumbs up. Um, yeah, it was great. The audience seemed to really like it. The the um, the organizers of the festival seemed to really like it. They were they were really they promoting very it and dedicated to it. Yeah. About their so love of the movie. so that has been really really great. I mean, we, we did have a rough cut screening about eight months ago, and we were trying to raise money. That we got a really good reaction. So that was like the first time I had been in a room and, and thought, oh my god, it's kind of working, and people seem to like it. Um, people were laughing at all the right places yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and here it was like you know the first five minutes you're like. You know, maybe there's eight things they might laugh at, and if they laugh at three or four, then they're going to be probably laughing at a lot of things in the movie. You mm -hmm. know? So, mm -hmm. it, no, it was it was. I could not really have asked for a better reaction in an audience, and it's great. I mean, I I try. You know, of course, it I'm, you feel gr elated when that happens. Um, 
I try to remind myself that tomorrow I could send, you know, I might get turned on by a different festival and I'll feel, you know, this big. So mm -hmm. I try not to get too emotional either way and, and just, you know, be happy that I made a film that I'm, I'm, that yeah. I'm proud of. But, but uh, no, it was great. It was great. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, it's also something that you could look at, you know, as maybe having a... Uh, Maybe having a life, you know, on uh, on PBS or, or 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 even something like the Food Network. Have you? Yeah, I hope so. Have you... I have some contacts with the Food Network, and I've been waiting until the film was finally finished to send it to them. But it's a it's a weird like I don't think it quite fits PBS. <coughs> um, I I haven't seen them do anything this comedic, you know. I mean, <laughs> to compare it to like I think the sensibility is like. Uh, besides being a little bit of a mockumentary type sensibility, like like American Movie uh -uh. or King of Kong, mm -hmm. you've seen those movies, like you know yeah, the ironic course. doc, but uh, that that takes his character seriously. It's not making fun of them, uh -huh. but like um, American movies. What a yeah, great movie that's that's, that's is. A, yeah. That's one of my <laughs> that, yeah. That, that, yeah. I don't need to put my film up on there with that. Level. That's, that a do a, yeah. that's a documentary that really kind of fools people into thinking this can't be real right, right? yeah and that, that's kind of but almost, it, it yeah, is yeah, real yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah um so i don't know it doesn't i don't know where the home is for it i mean hbo i feel like people who like certain shows in hbo would like the film but if you look at what hbo programs uh -huh. they program a lot of social justice things and they right. death and sex and not saying they're not great I and mean, those are great yeah films, of but, course but, but um they, but they I have kind know. of pigeonholed, pigeonholed themselves. Yeah, they, and comedy has kind of been left out of the. Yeah, they leave comedy to maybe some stand-up specials. Or yeah, stuff yeah. Like that, but, yeah. So in the doc world, um, I mean, I, I, I think the film is more than just comedy. But I don't, I don't know where the home is for. I, I, I hope it lives on and that mm -hmm. people can see it and that, you know that it finds a home somewhere. I mean, and certainly you could uh, as, as self distribution. Uh, I think you could easily find a market there yeah. because I mean, you know, we're talking chicken wings here. Right. And, and, right. You know, there yeah. are a lot of enthusiasts. Yeah, there are. Exactly. Know, yeah. I would love to go on a trip like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think we'll find some kind of satisfactory home for it eventually. I, you know, I, I think I, so. I mean, I, I certainly hope so. Um, it's it's a weird, you know, the doc film world is a. Some people, again, not to say that it's not legitimate and these movies aren't great, but. A lot of the doc film world is is into the social justice and highlighting problems in the world, or you know, educating people about things that are important. You know, and maybe chicken wings people wouldn't consider that an important topic. Uh huh. So, um, well, I definitely. I don't, I don't want to sound negative. There's I mean, definitely who knows? A, but it's, it's there like, definitely needs to be more yeah. room in the doc world for things that are fun. Yeah, yeah. Because I fun so. is part of life. Well, let's yeah. face it, and we we don't. Future movies can be fun, you know, I can't, I can, yeah. Exactly. I mean, no one's saying they can't be, but I just think a lot of the people who are involved in the doc world are uh -huh. more interested in other kinds of films. Right, know. exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, I, you know, I, I, I totally concur with what you're saying yeah. Uh, yeah. about that. You know, there needs to be, there needs, there's a place for yeah. this kind of documentary, yeah. for sure. One of, the th one of the aspects about the film that maybe gives me a little hope that maybe PBS might be interested in it is that... Uh, half of our film crew are Slovaks, and they end up becoming characters, and they have some really funny, again, walking that line between really funny, but also really insightful observations about American culture and food. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. So there's a cultural exchange that goes on in the film that is one of the aspects that I think is interesting about well, it. Well, there, isn't there, there's a TV show that's like American Roadside Attractions or something like that, that uh, um, I can't, I can't, American Roadside or something like that, uh -huh. that... Uh, that this this movie kind of reminds me, of, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it, it's serious uh -huh. in in one way, but it's also it's also funny in another way, mm -hmm. and it's uh, so I, I definitely think there's a market for this yeah. movie for uh, uh, sp specifically local PBS stations and uh -huh. sell it to them because you know there's there's you know PBS right. stations you know don't show PBS stuff most. Of the, of the time, time they buy, you know, they there's show daytime yeah. programming too, and yeah. even at six o'clock or whatever mm -hmm. before eight, the eight o'clock block. Yeah. That's really truly from PBS comes yeah. in. Yeah. So I that's I true. That you yeah. Could, I think that you could find a way to. Yeah, I, to, I'm sure we'll find that, some you know? some home for it in some form. You know, yeah. I mean, I want as many people as possible to see it, of course. Well, I I yeah. think I think it's I think 
you're gonna find another one for yeah, it. I hope so. If the if the whole country were Atlanta, you know, we. <laughs> no, I mean, who said it because they they have just been so supportive uh -huh. of the film. It's it's so. Um, it's just weird that like I submitted it to festivals in the New York area and I thought, oh, we we'll probably get in because it's got a local hook. Yeah. I sent it to Atlanta, not expecting to get in, and then it's here that uh -huh. people have loved it the most. So yeah. just, you know, you never know. Yeah, but have you sent it to like the Woodstock Festival or two? didn't get into Woodstock? Really? Yeah. Oh uh, wow. But somebody told me, that, and I'm naive in these matters, that that they are that is more of a high-minded uh -huh. kind of uh -huh. high. I don't. I don't Hoity -toity. Yeah, and I'm struggling for a non pejorative <laughs> term because, you know, I'm sure their films are great, but like, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't fit into. Right. And this is more of a laid back crowd that uh -huh. would be into things that are, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to say fun because I'm sure that there's I, fun movies that would suck too. Yeah. Uh, what, what? yeah. I, you know, I, I think, totally I think we missed an opportunity. I think that if the timing of us finishing had been right, I think we would have had a good chance to get into South by Southwest. I think uh -huh. that would have been a good. The vibe of that festival. Well, I mean, you match, could probably still do that. Maybe well, I think they, I think year, they don't right? do premieres, right? Or maybe they have a section for non-premieres. I don't know. I think they want premieres mostly, but maybe there's. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe there's you a might section. Be right. yeah. Well, that's the whole thing too. Once you do whatever, your premieres, I mean, slam dance. Uh, yeah, their deadlines have passed, but maybe mm -hmm. next year. Yeah, I, yeah. I would. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah, hope, I mean, keep hope. on going with, <laughs> with the fe festival yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I didn't mean it's like a downer. It's just that. It's just being on the, you know, it's like if you're a novelist and it's your first book and you just send it to publishers and you never know who's going to like it. It's the same kind of thing. Like, yeah. It, but what I meant to say was it's great that they love it here. You know? Well, just remember Dr. Really Dr. Seuss, <laughs> Dr. Seuss with his first book submitted that book 26 I know. different times. But, and you hear all kinds of stories like that. Time. Harry Potter, too. Uh huh. I mean, not that. It, Whatever, but you know that was yeah. rejected a gazillion times too. Like so, 20, never give times. up. You know, Mash yeah. was another one. That, you know, so it's yeah, yeah. You, it's, you just never know being on the other end of it what the, what's going on. Right. What the and was you're going. you're just getting your perspective now. So yeah. But it sounds like it's a it's it was it was obviously a tremendous success here, and mm -hmm. uh, we do you have a website for it? Yeah, uh, chickenwinghunt.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or if you, if you just Google Wing Hunt, it'll come up, or Chicken Wing Hunt, you'll find it. Well, Matt, I really appreciate you talking to Thank us. Thank you. I'm looking forward to you. I hope you'll see it. And um, I will see it. I didn't I mean will. to give you like you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I will I'm see it. I'm to, interested yeah, in seeing it. So. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you, so it would be really interesting to hear your reaction to it. Yeah. What you like. I'm, you I'm like really it. looking forward to looking at it. Yeah. Again, Matt Reynolds, the director of The Great Chicken Wing Hunt, here, right here at the Atlanta Film Festival. Thanks to all you movie geeks out there for watching it, uh, watching us talk about this, and uh, we'll see you out there in <laughs> old, the old podcast land. See you later. Happy wing hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Become a member of the Movie Geeks United family. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash moviegeeksunite, Facebook at facebook.com slash movie geeks united youtube at youtube.com slash movie geeks united or bookmark our website at movie geeks united dot net and you can also access our entire library of programs including more than 600 filmmaker interviews right here on blog talk radio at blogtalkradio.com slash movie geeks united